What's at stake in, in Victoria at the moment is the future of the state, because what we have uh, here in Victoria at the moment is a government which is, um, to say that it's out of control would be understating things enormously. If uh, Daniel Andrews gets uh, returned, particularly with a majority in both houses, um, Victoria has no future. He has taken away uh, so many freedoms. And I'm not just talking about uh, during the pandemic, but I'm, I'm talking about prior to that. Uh, he has taken away so many freedoms. Uh, and uh, he, he has absolutely no intention of giving them back, and he's already made it very clear, even today, that he will take away more. Hello and welcome to the Daily Declaration podcast. My name's Cody Mitchell. Today I was joined by Bernie Finn, who is a member of the Victorian Legislative Council. He formerly served as a member of the Liberal Party. Uh, He was actually expelled from the Liberal Party due to his pro-life stance and since then has joined the Democratic Labor Party. I decided to talk to him about uh, the pro-life movement and the upcoming Victorian state election. I hope you enjoy. Welcome to the podcast, Bernie. That's a very great pleasure, Cody. Good to be here, mate. Awesome. It's a pleasure to be talking to you. Um, you've been involved in politics for well, decades now. Um, you've been involved in the Democratic Labor Party, the Liberal Party, mm-hmm. and now in the DLP again. Um, yes. What originally led you into you know, the, the world of politics? Well, I suppose um, it was, it was I, I am one of Gough Whitlam's great legacies uh, because uh, he, he made me a conservative for life. Uh, I was I was 11 when he was first elected and uh, was during my formative years uh, as a teenager that I saw uh, what he did to my family, what I, I saw what he did to uh, uh, to the country. Um, and uh, I vowed and declared that I would uh, never allow them to do it again if I could possibly stop it. Uh, so I, I joined the DLP back in 1974 uh, when I was uh, when I was 13. Uh, they, they bent the rules for me, uh, and um, uh, I, uh, I spent uh, six, seven years in the DLP and then moved to Sydney. Um, I, I was living in, a, in country Victoria back in those days, and I lived to uh, move to Sydney, and, um, and there was no DLP in Sydney, so I joined the Liberal Party. Uh, the, the, it, was, it was interesting because both the ALP and the Liberal Party were after me, uh, and I um, it was the Liberal Party that uh, that I decided uh, that I, I would go with, uh, and um, um, I, I spent uh, over forty one years in the Liberal Party, and uh, I was, you know, a member member of Parliament for um, for twenty two of those years, nearly twenty three of those years, uh, and uh, very recently, um, uh, the Victorian Liberal Party decided that uh, they didn't really want pro lifers uh, in the party. They didn't want conservatives in the party. And they certainly didn't want me in the party, and uh, they threw me out um, merely for saying what I've been saying for for decades that uh, um, that uh, you know we we we've got to stop abortion, uh, and uh, it's it's difficult for me to to understand that, particularly coming from from our leader or their leader, uh, Matthew Guy, who um, previously had told me he was very pro-life. Uh, so it's it's very very difficult to fully understand, fully comprehend uh, exactly what is going on in the uh, uh, in the Victorian uh, Liberal Party at the minute. Yeah, well, yeah, no, as you said, um, that time in the Liberal Party, 40, 41 years, it came mm. came to a pretty abrupt abrupt end. Was that um, it did that it did. decision it to did. for them to expel you? Was that something that you mm. expected um, or saw? Well, coming? no. No, I did not, not, not even mildly. Uh, I, uh, you know, during the, during the course of all this, um, it's quite amazing the fact that, that nobody, nobody from the Liberal Party leadership, uh, from the leader, from the deputy leader, anybody else, actually rang me, actually came to see me, actually came to, came to talk to me about it. Uh, nobody, I mean, they had made up their mind they wanted me out and uh, they didn't want, to, didn't want to talk about it. So um, I, I did not see it coming. Um, I... You know, I've had some some fairly vigorous uh, debates previously on a whole range of issues with leaders, um, but I certainly have never um, seen or expected anything like this. Um, and when it happened, it uh, it came as, as quite a shock. 
um, and I think it's um, it, it shocked uh, quite a few people around uh, the country, from what I could see. Yeah, it certainly shocked me. Um, mm. You've since, of course, rejoined the the DLP, and I'll ask you a yes, little I bit have. about yes, that. Yes, I'm, I'm now I'm now Victorian leader of the DLP. I'm delighted to say, and um, really enjoying it. Yeah, and perhaps yeah. I should. Uh, Perhaps I should put Matthew Guy back on my Christmas card list. <laughs> no, that's awesome. I'll ask you a little bit more about that that uh, later. But sort of switching to the the present and the um, the Victorian election that's upcoming. Um, what do you see as like the main issues that are at stake in that election? Well, I think that what's at stake in in Victoria at the moment is the future of the state, uh, because what we have uh, here in Victoria at the moment is a government which is. Um, to say that it's out of control would be understating things enormously, uh, and if uh, if Andrew um, uh, if, if uh, Daniel Andrews gets uh, returned, particularly with a majority in both houses, um, Victoria has no future, uh, and, I, and I say that uh, I mean he he has uh, he has taken away uh, so many freedoms, and I'm not just talking about uh, during the pandemic, but I'm I'm talking about prior to that, uh, he has taken away so many freedoms. Uh, and uh, he, he has absolutely no intention of giving them back, and he's already made it very clear, even today, that he will take away more. You know, he said that if you uh, if if you swim in a in a um, a water hole, a watering hole that, um, uh, that 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 is not prescribed, then you will be fined. I mean, you know, if if you walk off a off a, off a walking trail um, that you shouldn't walk off, then you will be fined. Uh, I mean, this this is insanity. This is insanity. I, I have to wonder about Daniel Andrews' state of mind. Uh, I, I, I'm deeply concerned about it, actually, and uh, the prospect of, of him um, uh, being returned as Premier with a majority in both houses, uh, quite frankly, terrifies me, absolutely terrifies me, as I'm sure uh, it does to, uh, uh, to hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of other Victorians. Yeah, yeah, definitely, and one of those areas that I guess the uh, freedom... Um, it is a freedom issue, really, and and something that you've you've been uh, opposed to is the the conversion therapy or so called yeah. conversion therapy legislation. Yes, um, absolutely. And if I understand correctly, you opposed that in 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 Parliament when it was first put forward. Is that correct? Yes, so that that's exactly right. Well, much to my absolute consternation, again, uh, the Liberal Party uh, decided that it would support. Uh, that particular piece of legislation, and I say my consternation because uh, it's a legis- piece of legislation that um, was was against uh, freedom of association, freedom of religion, uh, freedom of speech, uh, a whole range of freedoms. It even interfered uh, with the relationship between um, uh, a father uh, or, or mother and and child. Um, it, it interfered with the the relationship between doctor and um, and patient. Uh, all of these things that we had been told uh, for forever uh, were sacrosanct uh, were all of a sudden out the window and, in fact, um, were were banned under threat of, of jail. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, it's a piece of legislation which is quite appalling. I couldn't support it. Um, as, as a Liberal, I couldn't support it. Um, how anybody else um, in the Liberal Party could 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 rationalise that, and I know that the human mind's a marvellous thing; it can rationalise most things. But but how anybody uh, in the Liberal Party who says they believe in freedom uh, could rationalise that legislation or supporting that legislation um, is, is is beyond me. Uh, it's 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 a total it's a total loss on me, and and a, and I still maintain that um, this is a a, a draconian piece of legislation. Um, that we have um, um, that we've never seen the likes of before in the state, and uh, uh, it's um, it, it's uh, typical, unfortunately, of what the Andrews government uh, has done to Victoria. Mm, yeah, no, it's really sad that that, that kind of mm. legislation is being seriously considered. Um, and you mentioned about the the prospects of of an Andrews government being returned to power. Um, I'm going to quote you. Um, speaking of the Liberal Party, you said. Um, quote, the party I joined over 40 years ago is dead, uh, end of quote. And um, I guess, are you concerned that the Liberal Party is really now no longer presenting as a solid alternative or opposition, particularly for Christians? Yeah, I'm very, very concerned about that, Cody, very concerned. And they have, they've made that clear. Uh, you know, Matthew Guy, um, you know, doesn't, doesn't seem to care about anything but winning. Uh, these days, and uh, you know, he's adopted the uh, the Graham Richardson approach uh, of what, whatever it takes. 
Uh, and, uh, you know, in terms of, of principle, in terms of, of standing on uh, for what is right, um, not interested. Uh, he's, he's as bad as Andrews on that regard. Uh, and, it's, and it's really just um, really just pathetic. Yeah, no, it makes it uh, awkward for a lot of people kind of coming into that election um, because a lot of people sort of uh, say, well, minor parties are never going to form government. You know, they just don't have that kind of support. And then on that basis, they uh, will never vote for a minor party. So I'd love your thoughts around what the, um, I guess, what, what minor parties like the Democratic Labor Party and, and, and Family First parties like that offer as opposed to, to the major parties? Well, I think what we were offering on this occasion is the, the need to prevent uh, Andrews having control of the upper house. That, that's the important thing, the really important thing. Because as I say, if Andrews uh, is returned with both houses of parliament, um, we are in for a world of trouble, a world of pain. Uh, and what we need to do is to ensure that uh, parties uh, such as the DLP um, are, uh, are returned or, or, or have a, a solid representation in the upper house to ensure that uh, these sorts of, uh, of, um, uh, uh, of changes that Andrews will try and push through um, are stopped. Uh, and, and really, if Andrews is returned in the lower house, uh, the, un- the only way that we're going to be able to, to stop him, to control him, um, is, um, is through uh, uh, the DLP and, and like-minded parties um, having the balance of power in the upper house. Uh, you know, it, it, if, if um, um, he's returned uh, with, uh, with the similar situation that we have now, um, there is little hope. And uh, I would hate to be uh, standing between any population centre and the Victorian border um, immediately after the election, because I think most people will be killed in the rush. Uh, it will be uh, it will be just horrendous. Um, uh, the, the, you know, people will be just getting out of it. Mean, Victoria's already lost, as I understand, uh, somewhere around about a hundred thousand uh, people uh, over the last twelve months. Uh, and uh, if Andrews has returned, um, particularly with that that majority in the upper house, as I mentioned, I am sure uh, that they, you know, we we could be looking at, at millions leaving. Um, and already, you know, I've, I've spoken as late as, t- as today uh, to people who have said that they are getting ready to leave um, if uh, if Andrews uh, returns. So uh, it's um, uh, it's it's not a, it's not a cheery prospect. Uh, and uh, you know, the, the, it has been said that um, you know the greatest friend of the Queensland real estate agent has is uh, Daniel Andrews, and uh, and I think I think that that's probably true. And uh, um, even uh, he, he might even be helping the Adelaide real estate industry at the minute, uh, but I, I think um, you know there are there are a lot of people I I, I know there are because uh, I've spoken to them, a lot of people who are preparing to leave uh, if uh, if Andrews is um, is returned. Wow, that's that's amazing. I um mm. I knew things were grim and didn't realise that they were that grim. Oh um, well, yeah, they are. They are. And, and and in terms of um, the way minor parties are coming into and and the Democratic Labor Labor Party are coming into this election, what do you think your prospects are of, of picking up a seat and holding something like a balance of power and in the upper house? Well, I think it's pretty good. I think it's very good. I mean, I, I am very confident uh, that will that I will retain my seat uh, in Western Metropolitan. I am very 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 uh, hopeful, should I say, that we will um, we will defeat uh, Fiona Patton in uh, Northern Metro. And uh, that would be reason for uh, some serious partying. Uh, if that were to occur, uh, that would that would be a great result. And I, and I think we could probably win uh, one or two others. Uh, and if we were, you know, if we were to have three or four seats uh, in the upper house, that would give us a very, very large um, section of the crossbench. I mean, already uh, the crossbench is the uh, almost the largest um, uh, component of the upper house. Uh, but what we need to do is to ensure that that crossbench is comprised of um, of the right people, of, of the right parties, um, and uh, you know we, we can work together. We, we you know we we can live without the Greens. Uh, we can live without the Animal Justice Party. Uh, we we can live without uh, without, without these, some of these nutbags uh, that that get in on uh, you know three votes and uh, and and the help of preference whisperers and all that sort of thing. Uh, we we can do with all, with all that. We we what we need is people um, who are genuinely concerned about um, Victorians and uh, are, are largely. Um, mainstream conservatives. Uh, that's how I would describe myself. I'm a mainstream conservative, 
um, would never back away from being a conservative uh, because I think uh, it's really, really important uh, that we stand for the things that uh, that we believe in. And, and you know, conservatism is the, the thing that uh, will protect um, protect workers, uh, protect uh, small business, uh, protect families, and certainly that uh, that's what the DLP. Uh, wants to do um, after, after this election when we uh, hopefully will have considerably more influence in what happens uh, in Victoria. Yeah, that, no, that's great. One of the, the issues, obviously, that uh, you've been very outspoken on and um, and listeners of you know, this podcast care a lot about is abortion. So I'd be really interested mm. to, to know how um, the DLP approaches that issue. Well, uh, my views on abortion, as you quite rightly say, uh, are well known. Uh, in fact, I've been fighting this issue since I was, um, oh, I think, about 15 or 16. Uh, I, I, I discovered what was going on and I've been fighting it ever since. Um, so that's a long time ago, in, in case you're wondering. Uh, and uh, I, um, I am totally committed to, um, uh, to, to the defence of, uh, of, of these little babies and, and also to support their mothers because, you know, the extraordinary thing is, and I speak to a lot of women who've had abortions, um, and have for, you know, for a long time. And invariably they say to me um, that they had the abortion because, quote, I had no choice. Now, it seems to me quite extraordinary that you would legalise abortion because you want women to have a choice and then they have abortions because they have no choice. So, you know, I, I, just, I just can't see the logic of that. So we, we, need, to, we need to balance that out. We need to, uh, to help women who... Um, who feel that they are in that situation. But more importantly, I think what we need to do is we need to uh, declare um, that, uh, that, that children before birth are human beings. Uh, we need to give them the same rights that the rest of us have, uh, the same rights that, that other, other children have, uh, and, uh, and most surely we must remove um, that, that capacity for anybody to kill them um, at will. Uh, you know, I, I often think what an extraordinary world we live in when we have places uh, in our major capital cities and in a lot of the major country towns where you can take your baby to be killed. I mean, could you, I mean, when I was growing up, if somebody had told me that you would have places um, where doctors and so-called doctors and nurses were and you take your baby in and you kill the baby and then you go home, if somebody had told me that, I don't think I would have believed them. I would have thought that's far fetched. Uh, but but here we have a situation now in Australia every year where um, so now some, somewhere between eighty to one hundred thousand. We don't know exactly, but somewhere between eighty to one hundred thousand uh, babies uh, are killed every year. Now that that you know that's like dropping a nuclear bomb on the MCG every grand final day. Uh, it's it's just uh, horrendous and. Uh, you know, it's it's very easy for people to say that um, uh, we, you know, we should uh, mind our own business and uh, we should um, uh, keep our morals out of people's uh, uh, lives and all that sort of thing. But the fact of the matter is that what we are attempting to do is to stop the killing of babies, uh, and and that's you know that that's some that that is as dear to my heart as, as anything else. And, uh, you know, the DLP certainly, so probably the, the reason that I rejoined the DLP was because of that, that pro-life stance, because um, I have been approached since the, uh, the conversion therapy bill last year. Um, I'd been approached by eight other parties uh, and asked to join. Um, and uh, when um, the Libs did what they did, um, I had to make a decision. Uh, and, and I joined the DLP, uh, and that was largely, largely, not entirely, but largely uh, because it was a, a pro-life, or it is a pro-life party. And, uh, you know, I, I am really enjoying being with people um, who agree with me um, and who support me and, and who actually want us to achieve what we, what we believe in. Um, I'm not used to it, but I'm really enjoying it. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I'm hoping that, uh, that come November, um, we can get the sort of results that, uh, that we need so that, that we can make a really strong and effective stand um, in defence of, of babies and their mums. Yeah, absolutely. No, and just uh, as a follow-up question, um, you know, we have a lot of everyday Christians uh, you know, listening to this, and um, yeah, abortion is one of those issues that 
can become very easily sidelined and we can become desensitized mm. to it. But a lot yes. of people really are, particularly with what's happening in America, waking up to the fact that this is a huge issue. Um, it is. How would you uh, advise people can just everyday Christians, the church, um, can make a real impact in in this area? Well, I think um, what we're seeing in, in, in a lot of Christian churches is that it's not an issue at all. And that distresses me enormously um, because for Christians to turn their back um, on this issue, and they literally are, uh, many of them, um, is, is a, a total abrogation of our responsibilities uh, as Christians. Uh, you know, the, the good Lord made it very, very clear that what, hap- what happens to, to people who hurt kids, uh, as far as he's concerned, he, he, made, that, he made that very, very clear. Uh, and I think, um, you know, he, he's feeling the same way. Uh, about those who um, would allow them to get away with it, uh, and, and 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 you know, let's face facts. Um, and, I, and I've said this for a long time. If if everybody did what they should do, and I include bishops and priests and and ministers and pastors and and uh, all manner of people like that, if everybody did what they was what they should do, we would stop the killing tomorrow. The abortion, the abortuaries would not open tomorrow. Uh, and that that is a fair a fair responsibility on the shoulders um, of us all that the overwhelming majority of people um, are just not taking to heart. Um, you know why why are so many babies being killed? They're being killed because we are letting them be killed. If we stood up and we stopped it, they would stop being killed. They would stop the the, the killing. So you know it's no use pointing the finger at somebody else. If if um, if people are not taking any action at all to fight this evil then they are responsible and you know my view is that when the time comes um the good lord will will hold them responsible uh you know he he will there will come a time um when he will say to them why didn't you do something he will look them in the eye and he will say why didn't you do anything and at that point well you better be a pretty fast talker, uh, because um, that that's that's not going to be a very uh, a very nice conversation for anyone to have. No, certainly not. Yeah, and I think part of the deceit comes um, in this view that it, abortion has been made a political issue, and there's still this very um, there's a great hesitancy within the churches around engaging with um, political issues. But it really, is a justice issue, isn't it? Yeah, it is. of course, it's a civil rights issue. It's the biggest civil rights issue in the world today. Now, if churches are prepared to get involved in the civil rights movement in the 60s, and, and rightly rightly so, why aren't they prepared to get involved in this civil rights movement now? Why aren't they prepared to stand up for babies being killed? Every day, there are babies being taken to places and being chopped up, being suctioned to pieces. This is happening every day. And there are bishops and, and church leaders uh, all over Australia who do absolutely nothing. Quite frankly, it disgusts me. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm a Christian. Um, I'm, uh, I'm a practising Christian. I hope one day I'll get it right. Uh, but it, 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 just, it just seems to me extraordinary that these people who are supposed to be our leaders, uh, who are supposed to be our faith leaders, <clears throat> um, don't actually do anything um, on such an important issue. You know, where are they? Why aren't they doing this? Uh, where is their conscience? Uh, you know, I, I ran into a very, very senior uh, churchman the other day, uh, and um, he, he was almost embarrassed to see me um, because, because you know, uh, the, the mere fact that he, he, he saw me made him realise that he wasn't doing anything. And I could, I could see the look on his face. It was, it was one of, of shame. Um, and as it should have been, as it should have been. But that doesn't change the fact that he's not going to continue to do nothing. You know, and that's, that's, that's just not good enough. That's not good enough. You know, we, every single one of us has a responsibility to stand up on this issue. Um, you know, the, the, the babies are being killed because we let them be killed. If we were committed to stopping it, it would stop. Uh, but we're not. We're not. And uh, certainly I, I would ask and, and urge everyone, uh, certainly in Victoria, uh, southern New South Wales, to come and join us um, uh, in the Treasury Gardens on October the 8th. 
uh, for for the March for the Babies, which is the uh, the biggest pro life event um, in Australia, and uh, we'll be we'll be marching. We're back on the streets this year. We're we're not uh, uh, we're, we're not virtual anymore. We're, so we're we're not. I'm not looking into a camera and uh, and uh, and uh, preaching, but I I'm I'm going to be there in in person as indeed we all are, and I I invite you all everyone um, to come and join us uh, in the Treasury Gardens at one o'clock uh, on Saturday uh, the eighth of October. Uh, for what will be the 14th anniversary of the the passing of the Abortion Law Reform Act, which removed all uh, legal protection for children uh, before birth in Victoria. Um, One of of the saddest days, one of the darkest days in the history of the state, uh, if not the history of this nation. And, uh, you know, come along and uh, and make your voice be heard uh, and, and let the government, let the media, let the community know that this is a huge issue and uh, we are all going to vote on it uh, come November. And uh, people's views on this issue will be taken into consideration uh, when people vote. Yeah, that's awesome. It's a great way for people to to practically be involved, to come along and see that there are other, there are other people out there who, who are committed to, uh, to defending life. Um, that kind of takes me to a... To a C- a, Cody, can I tell yep. you, it is the greatest morale boost in the history of the world. It, it really is. It really is. The, the the other thing that people should do, and I ask them always to do this, is pray for us. Pray, pray that we have, pray that we have change. Pray that we have victory, um, because prayer and action, that is an unbeatable combination. It really is unbeatable, uh, because you know, God works through us. You know, he he doesn't he doesn't have thunder thunderbolts and and all that sort of thing. You know, he he works through us. Uh, and, um, you know, if, if he reckons or if, if people think that he's not talking to them, they're quite possibly not listening hard enough. Uh, so, um, you know, ha- have, a, have a further listen because he may well be talking to you. Um, and, you know, and I, I will remember the night that the abortion bill was passed um, in, the, uh, <clears throat> in, the, in, the, in the legislative council, rather, uh, about 11.30 on a Friday night. Um, and... Uh, I, uh, I put my head down, uh, bowed in, in just horror, and I said, um, Lord Jesus, what do you want me to do now? He didn't muck around. The words March for the Babies came into my mind immediately. Um, and I, I took that as an order. Uh, and uh, we've not, uh, he, he's a bloke not to argue with, I, I hasten to add. Uh, and uh, I, I took that as an order, and I've, um, and, and we've done that, we've done that ever since. But, um, you know, we, we, we should be doing more. We should all be doing more, and uh, we we do need, as I say, we need leadership from those people. It, it seems extraordinary to me that uh, me as a politician should be going around lobbying clergy um, to be to be pro life. Um, sh- shouldn't that be the other way around? <laughs> it just uh, just uh, it bemuses me enormously. Yeah, that's a perfect segue into to my next question. Is which is. Um, you know, what do you see as the role of the church and Christians in in engaging culture? Oh, look, I, I think if we don't engo- engage culture, we're going to lose. That that's the bottom line. If we're not involved, if we're not if we're not out there leading the charge, uh, then we are going to lose, and we see that every day. The the left uh, and the 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 anti Christian elements, not not just the anti Christian elements, but but people who just um, um, uh, are anti-God, are anti-faith. I mean, th- there is a war going on against people of faith. There is a war going on against God. Um, we have a responsibility to take up the cudgels, to, to, to fight that war. Otherwise, the other crowd are going to win. And we've seen that happen in Victoria over the last few, you know, the last eight years. We have a government which is vehemently anti-God, vehemently anti-faith, um, and uh, they will continue to do that unless we we take up the cudgels and 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 uh, and fight it uh, we, we have to fight uh, otherwise we lose uh, and um, and with, without too much too much trouble I mean I'm I'm still waiting for the cavalry to arrive um, after the 2008 vote on abortion I, I, you know I waited and I waited and I waited and, and and here I am 14 years later and I'm still waiting uh, so you know we, we need everyone to um, uh, to, 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 to pick up their courage to pick up uh, their commitment to, to, to go out and and do what must be done to win. Um, otherwise, um, you know, as I say, we we will lose. Um, our kids are, uh, w- w- will lose, and um, we'll only have ourselves to blame. 
Absolutely. Yeah, that's a really important message. Um, just before we we finish, I'd um, love to ask you a more more personal question. Um, politics is it's a hard game, and and I dare say more so for a, a Christian than than for your average person, as I'm sure you've experienced. Um, you've done it well, and you, if you've done it for a long time. Um, what are some strategies that you've used to kind of um, stand firm in the faith, to to kind of ground you and to sustain you in that that battleground? Well, first and foremost, prayer. Um, I, I speak to the good Lord every day and um, he gives me strength. Um, he gives me uh, understanding of what I should be doing. And quite often, um, almost, well, almost every time uh, when I get up in the house, um, I say, you know, just as I'm getting up, I say, Lord, over to you. Uh, and and he, he gives me, I believe, I, I, he gives me the ability to, to speak on the matters um, that I should speak about, and and you give the views um, that that I need to give. Uh, so that that is is first and foremost. Um, secondly, is to is to um, form, I suppose, support groups um, around you to, to make sure that there are people of a like mind that you can talk to, people that, that will understand how you're feeling and and where you're trying to take them. Uh, and uh, that that's that's really important that uh, that that happens. Uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, quite frankly, you could go mad. Uh, it, it really, uh, uh, you know, because because you're told by everybody that you are mad. You know, I mean, I've I've had I've had premiers of Victoria. I remember Ted Bayview, um telling his mates that I was mad. Uh, crazy, I think. Uh, crazy, I think, was the uh, the expression that he used. Uh, and um, uh, you know, it, it's just um, uh, just. Uh, a pretty scary experience sometimes so it's it's really important to to have people around you that are are doing the right thing yeah absolutely that's really good and um just one final question how can can christians support you both in prayer uh, and in action well uh, in in prayer i would ask them to pray for me every day i'd really appreciate that because um as i say we, we can't win without prayer none of us can win without prayer um, but if they could go to the DLP website, which is www.dlp.org.au, um, there is an opportunity there to join the party. There is an opportunity there to help in the campaign. And there is an also an opportunity there to make a contribution, a financial contribution to the party. And I, had, I hate to say this because it sounds a bit crass, but the fact of the matter is that it doesn't matter how good the policies you have are, if you haven't got the money to sell them, you might as well have none at all. Uh, and that's that's where we find ourselves at the minute that um, you know the money the money is um, a bit low, um, so we would uh, we'd love some more. So if anybody feels like uh, making a contribution, uh, www.dlp.org.au, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you. In, in anticipation, that's awesome. We'll, we'll include a link in the description. Um, yeah, thanks, Bernie. It's been really encouraging and and inspiring talking to you. I really appreciate everything you've said. Great to have a chat, Cody. Great to, uh, to meet you. Thank you. Bye now. Authorised by Warwick Marsh, 1A227 Corder Road, Mount Kembla, New South Wales, 2526.